Welcome back to another Chico State video. I made a video back in August about partying at Chico State. Some general advice, wearing closed-toed shoes, not jumping off of the roof even though it looks kind of fun, those sorts of things. It's my most popular video and I'm so glad that people care about partying smart in college. But I talked to my boyfriend recently about how I didn't know when I became a teenager that men were just gonna like follow me around and be super creepy and catcall and all of those things. And he's like, I don't think anybody teaches their kid that and then I realized that a bunch of girls come to Chico and go to frat parties and get their asses grabbed and no one warned them so I'm here to warn you let's talk about how to drink party and hook up with people and do drugs without dying if you want to and that you also can just not do any of them but if you're watching this video you probably want to so let's be smart about it drinking. Even if you're underage, you're probably gonna find a way to make this happen for yourself if you want to. If you're the police watching this, I don't condone underage drinking and I've never done it. That's a lie. Uh, <laughs> the rule that they teach you in like how to be a smart alcohol consumer is one drink per hour and you have water in between and one drink is like a can of beer, half a glass of wine, or a single shot. But no one does that because if you drank one drink per hour, you probably wouldn't really get drunk and that's kind of the whole point of binge drinking <laughs> not that binge drinking is smart or the best way to drink in my opinion but that's not the goal of binge drinking so my rule especially if you are a lightweight or someone who has never really drank before two drinks and then wait half an hour and see how you feel it might hit you really hard like if you didn't really eat dinner before that you're gonna feel it and if you're like a skinny girl you're gonna feel it more than a fat guy would or any combo of those and if you feel comfortable with continuing to drink by all means but you should space them out a little bit because you don't want to take a drink and then wake up the next morning <laughs> that is not a good feeling and then people tell you the dumb things that you did while you were blacked out that's fucking embarrassing i think there's a sweet spot of being drunk where you're past that just like warm and fuzzy but you can still remember most things that happen and for me that's like two or three drinks and then another drink like maybe in like an hour and a half or two and that's just to kind of keep it going and that's when i remember all of these stories from college like one time we were at a house party and i just made everybody grilled cheese and if I was blacked out I probably would have <laughs> burned the house down or just not remembered that that even happened I mean you're going out to have fun with your friends you should try to be at a point where you can enjoy yourself and not be either the person crying <laughs> the person who like can't really walk and like needs to be carried home I had those friends drink so that it's actually a fun night and you're not just like an inconvenience to those that you meant to go out with or a safety liability because guys Guys and girls can be very easily taken advantage of when you get that drunk and that's anything from like someone stealing your wallet or like even you losing your keys that happened to me to the worst things sexual assault rape being drugged I don't know murdered uh, that doesn't really happen but it could I'm not trying to scare you but like you see how maybe it's smart to keep your wits about you I said that so much in my last partying video but like you should know what's going on at least a little bit once you regularly start going out you'll be able to find your sweet spot having fun oh also if you're drinking it is very common for people to do handle pulls which a handle is a big thing of usually vodka is like the choice it has a handle on it and people just drink it that is how you accidentally take like six shots in one gulp people will like count how many seconds you can do it while that's happening you can definitely feel some pressure to also try to drink more like everybody else in the room but you don't have to you don't even have to judge other people but if you're not in the mood to get that drunk just get a little drunk and hang out with everyone that's what i did probably the second half of my freshman year on because i binge drank too much my first semester and i didn't like it see if someone there has a shot glass that way you can control <laughs> the amount or a red solo cup the bottom rim on it is one shot so this is like an off-brand red solo cup so it's a little bit smaller but if it was true to size there's a little lip on the bottom here and that indicates that when you pour that amount that's one shot that's really helpful if you're like in the dorms drinking or at a house party and someone has vodka and you do want to pour it out instead of drinking from the handle you can control how much alcohol you're drinking which if that's something you want to do there's a helpful tool. As far as your alcohol source, 
This is something I made it a hard and fast rule for myself freshman year that if I didn't know somebody and they handed me a drink in a cup or in a like just a handle that they're carrying around a party that's already opened, jungle juice or any of the above, I'm not drinking that. No thank you, I'm good. If they hand you a beer in a can, all good, you know? Can's closed, no one's drugging me. <laughs> Same with you can slap the wine bag, probably fine. Everybody else is drinking out of that wine bag, they're not gonna roofie everybody. What a sentence. I would also say it's very rare for there to be kegs at Chico State parties. I think I've been to two parties ever that had kegs at them, but if you have a cup that you grabbed off the stack and fill it with beer, you're fine. I wouldn't even take a cup from somebody else if I didn't know them because I'm very averse to getting drugged. I'm very like safety aware and cautious because I'm not gonna die, okay? I refuse. As a woman especially, I think you need to get very good at saying no. It is very likely that people are just trying to be nice to you and guys are just trying to kind of hit on you. They're trying to get on your good side by giving you some alcohol and then you'll like talk to them. Maybe you'll get their number. Maybe they'll go home with them and that's that's fine. But what if it's like the one guy all year that decides to put like a Xanax or some other drug in there? Because it's happened. I know a girl who had a Xanax put in her drink at a frat party. You have to tell me that story one time for me to go, I'm good. I will get my own drink. I am an independent woman. Maybe that's just me. I know tons of people who took drinks from strangers and they were fine. I didn't. So this next thing, not gonna lie, I've been a little bit afraid to say on this channel because it's not very nice. <laughs> and that is that there's a reason that there are rumors about certain houses, certain fraternities, and it's because they're kind of true. Specifically, there's one house of a fraternity. The fraternity is not affiliated with Chico State, and this house throws parties every freshman welcome week. It's very popular during that time of year. And I went to parties at this house, my my freshman year despite its reputation. Just because a place has a reputation doesn't mean you can't still have fun partying there as long as you stay with your group. <laughs> This place was called the Rape House or the Rape Frat or the Rape Barn. And there have been a multitude <laughs> of rapes reported at that frat. Granted, the last one that I know of was in 2015, which is when I was a freshman. There were three in 2015, which was why this rumor was so widely spread when I was a freshman. I don't know if things have changed at all in the dorms. Maybe they don't even call it that anymore. When I went to that house, I went with guys that I knew and liked and I made sure I stayed with at least one person the whole time I was there and those were the parties where I especially was like no thank you like whatever you want to give me I am so good and they're like this is my house and I'm like that doesn't make it any better like I super don't want things from you there was one night where I was with two girlfriends and they wanted to go downstairs to get more drinks with the guys and by downstairs I mean into their very creepy looking basement and I get that it's like a gross frat house and that's just what it looks like but I was pretty drunk and was like hey ladies I'm not going to that basement do I need to spell out why like did we not all hear the rumors about this place which I was definitely more cautious than all of my friends in that manner but I also you know wasn't trying to die I don't know so maybe I was just being a total prude but I was like I'm good I'm not going into the basement I would rather walk home alone I'm pretty sure what I actually did was I went outside and danced for a little bit and then waited for them to come back out. So all was fine. But know that those rumors exist about a multitude of houses. Like the frats all have sexual assault allegations at least sometime in the last five years. And a lot of that has to do with because these people are all drinking a lot and they may be having what they think is consensual sex because they're super drunk. And then the girl wakes up and was like, I don't remember any of this. And then all of a sudden a whole fraternity is in trouble. I don't know. It's just one of those things that as a woman you should be aware. Like you don't need to be so scared that you never leave the house. You can go to these places and have a good time. You just have to know like hmm maybe I shouldn't go up to this guy's room because like what is he trying to do? Because you might be out pretty drunk with your friends and they'll be like go he's cute and you're like I don't know. Uh, 
which leads me to my next point which is that for some reason at frat parties like guys just think they can do this like you'll be walking by you know it's pretty crowded and you're just trying to get through the crowd and people will just grab your ass or they'll like touch like the small of your back or like they'll upskirt you creepy shit <laughs> That's one of those things where I got really good at whipping my head around and be like, you're a fucking creep. Don't talk to me. <laughs> like, do not touch me. I'm an angry drunk, I guess. I don't know. On top of that, like I mentioned, guys will try to take you home. Guys will try to take you upstairs if it's their house. You know, they want to get laid. I get it. But if you're too drunk or like your friend is definitely too drunk or you're just not in the mood, like you don't have to say yes. And if your friend is definitely blacked out, she's not going to remember you going, let's fucking go home versus her going up with this guy who she doesn't even know. She doesn't even know his name. Oh my god. I don't know. Maybe I'm a prude. Am I? It does kind of seem like the drunker you are, the more they try. I mean, if you are interested in hooking up with people, out at parties, going back to their place, them coming back to yours, whatever. If you can, try and see if they can come to your place because then like your roommates are around or your neighbors are around and if something goes wrong, people nearby know who you are and can keep you safe. I only ever like one time met a guy at a party. I got his number and he came to my dorm to hang out one day and <laughs> I was like sitting on my bed and he was like standing in front of me and he like tried making out with me and I was like I'm not really feeling this like I don't really wanna and he told me it doesn't matter what you want and came on to me and I was like uh, get the fuck off of me and get the fuck out of my room and I like pushed him out of my dorm room and he was in the hallway like banging on my door and then he just left and I never saw him again <laughs> I never like he you know he texted me I was like ah blocked I mean I don't know what it is they think because you're young and you're kind of stupid and I mean look at me I'm like a ditzy blonde I think some guys not all guys but some fucking people think that they have the authority to tell you what you can do and they're gonna have their way with you. The fact that I was even like, give me your number, I'll talk to you tomorrow when I'm sober, when I was out at a party, like what would have happened if I went back to his place that night when I was drunk and I didn't have the wherewithal to be like, get out, <laughs> like this is my house, bye. So it's just things like that that make me really say like, please be careful of these people that you meet out. Alcohol can be a really nasty thing. It can be really fun, but it can turn some people into really bad people who will, you know, get angry if you're like, well, I don't want to have sex with you, so. I'm not victim blaming or victim shaming, but anything that you can do to take care of yourself and put yourself on like an equal playing field, self-preservation <laughs> or protect yourself, I think is really good. It's hard knowing that biologically most guys are stronger than me and if they really wanted to, they could do whatever they wanted. They could steal my money, they could take my cracked iPhone, they can, you know, all I can do is run away, hit them with my hydro flask and pepper spray them. So I try to be aware of my surroundings and I think all women should be. I think a lot of my friends were far too trusting of these guys that I would never <laughs> give the time of day. To each their own, if that's the life you want to live, go for it. I don't know. If you go out with a group of friends and say there's like three of you, keep the three of you together. Don't leave one person alone. They might even say like, it's fine. Like, just leave me here. You probably don't want to leave them there. Like, I'm sure there are situations where it's fine, but in general, if someone's like, I'm just gonna leave now, uh, where are you going? How are we gonna know you got there? Okay. Unless they're leaving with someone else that you know and you feel comfortable with it, I would try to keep the group together. If you go out with four and you break out into groups of two, that's fine, but try not to leave one person alone. Definitely don't go, oh, we're gonna go to a different party now and then just dip and just try to be a good person despite the fact that you're pretty drunk and maybe like your friends being annoying because they drank too much. You were like, I told you not to drink this much. You're here in college to get an education. These are also like some of the best years of your life to go out drinking with all your friends because you don't really get hangovers yet. Trust me, over the four years, five years of college, you will really see how poorly your body starts to process alcohol 
alcohol, it's saddening. I don't want to scare anybody with this video. Like my goal isn't to be like, everything is terrifying. Stay home all day. Never go out and have a drink or try anything new ever in your life. I'm just trying to say it's not freaking Sesame Street, okay? Terrifying people exist out there. Lock your doors at night. Probably lock your windows too. Carry pepper spray with you. Don't take open drinks from strangers and don't feel like you have to do anything that you don't want to do. Whether that's taking a drink you don't want, doing a drug you never have been previously interested in just because everyone else is doing it, going home with a guy or a girl that you're like, Ugh, whatever. <laughs> You don't want to feel like that about someone you're going home with. I don't think so, at least. That's just, eh. I want you to have fun in your next four to five years of partying. Once you're done with the house parties, you move on to the bars, which can be quite a bit safer seeing as there's security there. Bartenders are pouring your drinks. Things are more controlled. You're gonna make mistakes, probably. You're gonna have nights where you wake up in the morning and your friend was like, yeah, you cried all night long. That bruise is from when you tripped over a tree stump and you made out with insert name here. And those. <laughs> are not good nights and those are not good next mornings and usually that's enough inspiration to be like eh, maybe i'll be a little smarter next time but you've been forewarned now well, i guess this isn't really relevant because of the quarantine but if you are an incoming freshman i'm sure parties will be back up and running again in august should we all be let out of our homes do with this what you will yeah things aren't safe but also you can still have a good time just kind of keep it in the back of your mind i hope you found this video helpful i love you so much i hope you're staying safe. I'm here for a good time and a long time. Can both exist at the same time, please? I think so. I love you. Thank you for watching. Also, get STD checked.